is vice chairman and whole time director mr raj gandhi group cfo and whole time director and mr kapil agarwal full time director of the company we will initiate the call with opening remarks from the management following which we have the forum open for a question and answer session before we begin i would like to state that some statements made in today's call may be for looking in nature and i disclaim that this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier i will now request mr rakesh jaipuria to make his opening remarks good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining us on our earnings conference call i hope all of you had the opportunity to go through our results presentations that provides details of our operational and financial performance for the quarter we have started the year on a strong note delivering notable growth across all parameters robust demand in both domestic and international markets also supported by the early onset of summer in india translated to healthy volumes during the quarter which grew by 18.7% this along with improved net realizations resulted in a solid net revenue growth of 26.2% quarter 1 2022 on the profitability front as well we have delivered enhanced performance despite significant increase in input costs witnessed during the quarter our ebitda grew by 39.1% and our margins improved to 18.8% in quarter 1 2022 on the demand front we are seeing a solid uptick in consumption the summer season in the domestic market has begun well and as we enter the peak months we are well prepared to cater to the anticipated demand by optimizing our capacity utilization across all plants and further enhancing our reach across establishments and under penetrated markets during the quarter the board approved the proposal to manufacture kurkure popcorn for pepsico india as part of their network of co-packers the commercial production is expected to begin from quarter 3 of 2022 as we look ahead on the back of an improving demand environment we remain confident of delivering healthy volume growth in the medium to long term we are also happy to share that as a token of appreciation to all our shareholders the board today has recommended a bonus issue of one equity share for every two shares held by shareholders of the company as on the record date overall our initiatives today towards improving our market share building infrastructure and expanding reach continue to hold us in good stead and we are confident of delivering strong and sustainable growth going forward i would now invite mr gandhi to provide the highlights of the operational and financial performance thank you very much uh, thank you mr chairman Good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone joining us today. Let me provide an overview of financial performance for the first quarter ended 31st March 2022. Revenue from operations registered for XIE PSC grew by 26.2% year on year in the Q1 2022 to the level of 28274 million rupees. Total sales volume grew by 18.7% to the level of 179.7 million cases in Q1 2022 from the earlier level of 150 1.4 million cases in the calendar in the quarter 1 of 2021 on account of strong demand environment across geographies CSE constituted 70% juice mix of 7% and packaged drinking water mix of 23% of total sales volume in Q1 2022 realization per case improved by 6.3% to 157.3 in Q1 2022 led by price hike in select SKUs change in SKU mix and high realization in international markets on the profitability front ebitda increased by 39.1% to 
to the level of 5310 million rupees in Q1 2022 gross margins for Q1 2022 reduced by 427 basis points to the level of 51.5% from 55.8 in Q1 2021 primarily because of increase in pre form prices by around 30% over q1 2021 despite the decline in gross margin the company was able to improve its ebitda margin to 18.8% during the quarter because of higher operating leverage driven by strong volume growth and high realization finance cost declined by 19% to the level of 469.6 million during q1 2022 primarily because of lower average cost of borrowing that increased by 98.2% to the level of 2710 million in q1 2022 from rupees 130 136 crore or 1367 million in q1 2021 given by improvement in margins reduction in finance cost and higher profitability from international operations overall during the quarter we have reported an encouraging performance we have seen a strong demand environment and are excited about our prospects going into the peak season and our outlook remains positive for all our product categories over the medium to long term on that note i come to an end of the opening remarks and would like to now ask the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have thank you thank you very much So we'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Percy Panthaki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, 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 good afternoon, Percy. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, when uh, you were doing the Pepsi acquisition, uh, just before that, you had shared that uh, your market shares in. uh uh south and west would be around 25% and uh, in your core geographies the uh, existing geographies they were about 40% um uh, now uh, of course we do not expect you to update us uh, on this on a regular quarterly basis but since it's been 3 years since then would you give us an idea on what kind of market shares uh, stand today versus what you had shared earlier the first the only thing i can tell you is after our acquisition for last two years we could do very little because both the years in the peak season covid was there and so what we really needed to do was enhance our go to market increase our uh, distribution which we had started in 19 but could not uh, completely go through with that in 2021 because of the peak season disturbance which this year is the first year when we are seeing that uh, the change happening and when our distribution enhancement is starting to give us uh, encouragement and giving us results so that is why you are seeing better numbers and uh, uh, in even in the off seasonality quarter we are seeing better results because the territories which we had acquired have started doing well so the context in which i asked this was if i look at uh, this quarterly result and try to calculate uh, the organic uh, volume growth on a 3 year basis using 3 years because 2 uh, years also is not a, a normal base uh, because of covid so now we have to look at 3 years so on that basis the organic volume growth uh, uh, for the india business is 10 and a half percent i just wanted to understand whether uh, the industry itself is growing at this rate 
or is it market share gains which is leading to such robust growth because in this kind of a consumption environment no other fmcg companies uh, reporting a 10% kind of a volume growth in fact most of them will report close to zero volume growth this quarter so just understanding the source of this growth is it a broad based industry growth itself and if so why is this industry so different from the rest of the fmcg pack and if not then obviously it's a market share gain well partly the industry is growing so uh, it is not only that we are growing i think competition is growing also obviously our enhanced go to market is giving us some results so there we feel we might be doing better but i can't really be sure of that because uh, those numbers are not available but uh, i think overall if you look at it uh, the uh, the season has started a little earlier also this year the uh, summer started a little earlier so i think everything put together and overall our real enhancement in go to market which is the key uh, issue in this uh, trade and putting enough chilling equipment is what is helping us grow the market any data you can share on uh, the increase in distribution touch points or the increase in the uh, uh, chilling infrastructure uh, that you have affected i uh, should sure, uh, perceive that data it that uh, in the quarter the presentation also is given here what i would like to tell you is uh, how uh, you know we are increasing our uh, penetration in the market not only the distribution go to market also we are trying to enrich our product portfolio over last year if you see uh, in the last two years what has changed for us is thing which is energy drink and last year the growth uh, in that particular segment was 440% and became 5% of our mix and in this quarter also that has grown 131% also the dairy products which we have started and uh, we are already booked to our capacity to the full tropicana which we took first you know there are phases uh, when we first they had never uh, franchised tropicana anywhere in the world that you know they gave it they chose one beverage they gave it to us second it was always for last 10 15 years was getting co packages from third parties we put the facility started in house and made it a profitable so that we can earn and flow back this for the growth of that and uh, happy to inform that we are already 100% capacity utilization on tropicana and we, we are feeling necessity to double our capacity by next year and if we do that the way the demand is coming unfulfilled the demand in that field i mean there is a huge growth potential so one another factor rather than go to market is the product portfolio engagement understood understood uh, also can you give us uh, some guidance on your capex uh, uh, not the total amount but things like in the international geographies uh, where do you think if at all uh, you would require uh, uh, capacity enhancement and whether it can be done through a, uh, a brownfield or would you need a greenfield and similarly in india now that you have a very sort of uh, robust uh, uh, footprint uh, presence in almost every state uh, do you think that most of the capacity enhancement in india can also be done through brownfield rather than greenfield given that uh, 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 most of our uh, facilities have uh, sort of excess land on which uh, brownfield expansion can be done see uh, we try and enhance our capacity wherever it is possible in by brownfield since we have plants in most of the states but due to our uh, water utilization some of the locations even though we can put up another line the water uh, the amount of water we draw does not allow us to put any more lines there so we have to go for green field plants so that is one of the conditions uh, which changes some of the brown fields into green fields and the one state which we didn't have a plant which was bihar we have just started our plant uh in uh, on april 1st and that is uh, uh is doing extremely well for us 
if you see the result uh, uh, see you will see uh, you know uh, in the presentation that sandila uh, we increased the capacity which was a downfield uh, bihar where we didn't have a plants and uh, last time when we mentioned uh, it was more driven uh, for uh, you know arbitrage between freight versus fixed expenses but uh, that uh, proved to be a very good decision and uh, that capacity is becoming very handy to get it to the growth there so it's going to be a mix of the two at least for some more years and on the international front uh, uh, see uh, last year we had doubled the water capacity in morocco which due to delta uh, they could not be implemented during the season time which was implemented in august the fruit of which will be available this year and uh, that's running to full uh, to its capacity and uh, uh, in uh, zimbabwe we are adding our capacity this year by may june it will be implemented just before uh, the season there and uh, that capacity increase is uh, uh, going to be because last year zimbabwe got support from zambia this year zambia will be feeding drc where we are not going to make any investment in we uh, test the market so these are the international capex plans right so in terms of uh, uh, monetary amounts uh, if you can uh, give some rough number for CY22. It won't be very large, Percy. This year it won't be very large because uh, the water line was already put last year in uh, Morocco, and uh, DRC is going to be fed from our Zambia line. It's only one line which we are adding, so about 10 to 15 million dollars is the total capex we are looking at internationally. So right, to interrupt, sir. Mr. Percy, may I request you to please rejoin the queue? We yeah. have participants waiting for the term. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Imanshu from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, team, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, sir, firstly, just to understand this quarter's performance, I mean, there was a commendable uh, reduction in expenses below the gross margin uh, line. So, just wanted to understand, I mean, this sort of operating leverage, uh, I mean, uh, this is is this completely operating leverage, or there were certain one-off Uh, benefits or cost reductions as well that we sort of saw. Just wanted to understand whether the, whether we can operate at uh, broadly these level of uh, employee and other expenses basically, and can we benefit significantly in that case once the gross margin start recovering again? This is mostly an operating leverage, yes, because the volume has gone up and uh, there was not a change in fixed expenses. so so you mean to say if this sort of volume growth sort of continues for us i mean and once the gross margins recover uh, in that case we should be looking at significant margin expansion right see the gross margins uh, presently you know as we stated that uh, what we have done is because uh, the demand was uh, quite uh, strong and uh, the commodity prices had gone up the discounts were curtailed to the maximum and uh, once uh, the price increase happens discounts may uh, come back so i don't see a big jump in the profit margin except due uh, to, to the further operating leverage you know uh, as we have stated in our earlier call about 23% of our annual volume we do in the first quarter and uh, second quarter is one and a half x around of the uh, first quarter's volume equivalent so operating leverage in next quarter definitely will be there and operating margin in next quarter is definitely going to be much superior than the first quarter but it is not true for all the fourth quarter third quarter may look like the first quarter fourth quarter will be depressed right sir right and sir in terms of uh, uh, gross margins can you talk a bit about in the current quarter how are we seeing our uh, raw material prices whether we might need uh, some amount of uh, uh, price hikes well uh, you know if you saw we had borrowed extra money and we had uh, uh, stored enough our key ingredients is pt raise in which we had take, uh, kept Store, uh, stored enough for the full season so we don't see any challenge on that front even if the prices go up because we are already sitting on stocks uh, with us and uh, concentrate is fixed so there's nothing sugar prices are reasonably within the same range maybe 1 or 2 rupees up or down so we don't see any cost escalation further 
and uh, the competition has taken some price increase and we have also taken some price increases so that benefit will come in this quarter understood and sir second question which was on the write off uh, i think we have taken a 14 and a half crore write off on some uh, plant and machinery Uh, so, but we don't see that uh, flowing uh, uh, through the uh, PNL. So, is it is it a direct adjustment uh, from the balance sheet that has happened in that case? Uh, it is through the other expenses that are coming to the B and L, and uh, uh, this is uh, actually there. Basically, we were left only with the glass line water line in our consolidation process was already shifted to Gujarat plant, and uh, water line, you know, the glass is uh, unfortunately not going. so we it took the plant machinery glass and very small can line right off because after glass doesn't work only a small can line running a plant doesn't make sense because we have seen with our experience larger plants the cost of production per case reduces substantially which now we are up to and that consolidation process for the next few years may be going ahead therefore you know they can't be straight answer like in the earlier question that uh, will everything be downfield uh, maybe may not be because consolidation is going to be key in next few years so so adjusting for this 14 crores our uh, operating margins are even higher because you are saying this 14 and a half is a part of other expenses that's correct right sir that's right all right that's it sir thank you and all the best to you thanks for taking my question sir thank you the next question is from the line of strenik bachavas from lic mutual fund please go ahead hi sir thanks for the opportunity and congrats on great set of numbers uh, sir could you please explain if electricity issues are being faced in various parts of the country so will that impact our business in any form going forward well we are not facing any major electricity issues anywhere but if there is any it doesn't affect our uh, business because we are fully backed up with generators so as the overall production there will be no uh, constraint it might be that if there is less electricity the cost might go up slightly because of generators but it's not very significant so no sir i mean to say from the distribution side the retail outlets and uh, will they be affected no, I because don't, we are not seeing any challenge as of now yeah. sure sir and uh, could you share the utilization level currently and previous year if i'm not wrong it was around 60 65% in the peak season uh well it is so last year we didn't have a peak season unfortunately so april may both were uh, covid so you can't take a uh, you know but uh, this year we are uh, trying to utilize our lines as much as possible actually we are running our lines fully actually Okay. And sir, uh, this last question: Could you share the uh, volume growth expectations and EBITDA margin expectations for CY22? Well, we have just said that uh, you know our first quarter is about 23% of the mix, so we expect hopefully the volume okay. should be based on that, and the EBITDA margins are always higher in the second quarter because of the volume growing up. So, looking uh, looking quite healthy. No, no, on fully basis, CY twenty uh, two fully basis margin. What can we expect? Uh, well, uh, you know, it, it, we I think did twenty one percent or so in nineteen, uh, mm-hmm. which are our normal margins with operating average. It will be here and there. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. if calculate for us, it will be a little difficult to give any guidance on that. Sure, sir. Oh, thanks. The project. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Bhim Rajka from Munna K I S. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is uh, uh, just two, three small questions. Uh, one is, what would be our volume split between domestic and international market for the first quarter? Out of one eighty, one forty-seven is uh, India. Balance is international. Okay, so one forty-seven and thirty-three, right? Okay. 
and uh, sir uh, as of uh, the quarter ending 4 to see by 21 we had a net debt of approximately 3005 crores so in these four months uh, what is the debt that we have repaid if any and what would be our net debt as on date or as at end of the first quarter yeah it's 3100 and some odd figure as on 31st march and uh, uh, that also included uh, because of the inventory uh, which we created for uh, PED stocking. Okay. So, and uh, so there's no uh, debt repayment aspect in the first quarter, right? Uh, this is, uh, uh, yeah, because in this first quarter we have paid for uh, the CAPEX for Jammu plant, which is for backward integration. We also had paid for uh, Sindila plant, uh, which is a downfield extension. We have also okay. paid uh, more or less fully for the hub plant, which got implemented in this month. So that capex, then uh, without raising any additional debt, is already taken care. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, for uh, so you said uh, last question is that for CY22, you said for international markets there would be up 10 to 15 million USD capex. So how much would it be for the India market uh, then? Uh, in fact, uh, this uh, up to May, that uh, 10 to 15 million, which uh, is from the internal approvals being paid already, side by side, no debt increase. For okay. India, actually, I think what we would like to restrict ourselves is by saying that, uh, you know, which we are saying for the last five years, equal to the depreciation figure uh, to cater to the normal organic growth 10 to 12 percent level. If we grow, say, one and a half X, so one and a half years equivalent depreciation, if we say grow two years equivalent, so two years equivalent depreciation figure. So, I mean, we are given a guidance to this formula. Uh, and, uh, you know, projecting future is little difficult. And uh, uh, here, actually, what I like to tell you is by June end, we will know broadly which direction we are going ahead. And uh, at that point of time, we will be forming up our capital, uh, you know, capex plans and right. we'll be able to share. Till then, you know, it's only a speculating, I think, would like to stay a little away from there. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, sir. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jai Kumar Doshil from Kota. Please go ahead. Mr. Jai Kumar Doshil, please go ahead with a question. Your line is unmuted. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a great set of numbers. My first question is 16-17% volume growth in uh, India is very impressive in context of what we are seeing in SMCG as well as uh, you know uh, Alcobev company that has recently reported. So is this growth broad based across geographies? Are you able to sort of, uh, you know, uh, is the environment conducive for you to grow double digits in North and East markets as well? Oh, this has been broad based. So it's not only the South and West, it's been the growth has been reasonably good throughout the country, give or a little bit depending on the rains and uh, and the weather, but mostly it's been broad based. Uh, that's great, good to know. So, in uh, you know, from South and West, at, you know, when uh, do you think, uh, you know, have we hit a kind of an inflection point or? Will we see uh, accelerated growth in this season, or you think that uh, uh, it will be next season? Well, I think we are already seeing it, accelerated growth from south and west, and south all west. the territories which we have acquired. So wherever there are very weak territories, we are seeing additional growth coming in. Uh, so it has started to contribute. Uh, great. Yes, great. It has started. Uh, Right. On international markets, again, 30% volume growth is very good. Uh, uh, other than Sri Lanka, are you seeing any kind of uh, operating challenges or currency-related uh, issues in any market, or do you see any risk in context of you know inflationary? Even in Sri Lanka, we are business-wise, we are still doing all right. We have we would be one of the companies which is still not going negative in Sri Lanka and continuing with minor growth. Obviously, the foreign exchange challenges are there, which we are managing. And uh, there will be some challenges, but I, it's such a small part of our business that has got to grow Sri Lanka. And actually, if you look at the first quarter growth, Sri Lanka has grown at 37%.
So and Sri Lanka is also growing for us. I I would assume it's local currency. It must be local currency, thirty seven percent. Yeah. Uh, in fact, these are volumes. So uh, no, no. This is volume. No, this is volume. So this is not currency okay. related. Understood. This is actual volume growth. So currency related is completely different. Thank you. And my final question is, you know, the partnership with Pepsi in foods business and you know, starting as a co-packer. Uh, are there uh, other players globally? Uh, uh, in other markets where this model has evolved and the idea of asking is you know beverages has been it's a well established model of bottling uh, uh, all across the world and it's a very high gross margin business as compared to foods business so are there uh, are there similar partnerships that have evolved which where we can look and to get a better understanding of how this uh, journey can not sort of to, shape not up to our knowledge so we might be the first in the foray so we are also learning from it so that's uh, that's why it will be an interesting start and uh, let's see where it takes us uh that's it from my side thank you so much and we're looking forward to a great season thank you jay thank you the next question is from the line of nihal jam from edelweiss please go ahead yes sir thank you so much and congratulations on the strong performance So three questions from my side. Uh, the first one was, you know, just delving into the strong volume growth. If you had to compare, say, from three years back, has there been any significant change in the product mix other than other than say the sting being added versus you know uh, CY19? Yeah, if you look at it, you know, the the three products which Mr. Gandhi said, sting of course has been a very strong performer for us. our value added dairy has done extremely well and tropicana juice has done extremely well for us so all the three categories have done extremely well for us apart from the of course our core business which is uh, csd and uh, and other juice and water category absolutely that's it for mr jaipur would it be possible just to give a approximate proportion of what these three specific products would make up at this point in time of our total volumes these new products uh, uh, last year 23 24 million was the same full no i think uh, it's about uh, sting is about 6 to 7% of our mix yeah in this quarter in this quarter yes i am i am giving you very approximate numbers so that is helpful yeah. what is the mix and uh, you know uh, in uh, value added dairy and tropicana we uh, run uh, run out of capacity so we are producing 100% to what our capacity is and unfortunately it will not so such a seasonality day for going up because we will continue producing 100% of our capacity so it those volumes will only go up now once we add capacity to uh, this uh, uh, to both these products So Tropicana is two percent, and Bill, dairy is about half a percent for the time being. So that's basically the capacity of the unit which we had put up in Pathan Court. Is uh, Tropicana and dairy both are fungible on the same equipment? That's another constraint. But I well so that equipment is giving us about two and a half percent mix for the time being. And uh, about seven and a half percent is staying. So between the three, you are talking about ten percent, which you can say would be close to negligible at least two to three years back. Which was practically not there. Yes, practically very small. That is very helpful. The second question uh, was on this uh, popcorn uh, arrangement. Uh, I know we've answered, but just uh, at this point in time, while the current arrangement is a co-packing, uh, co is there a discussion on the table that you know you take up the distribution similar to the beverage uh, business? And, and just to understand that, would say the food business require a manufacturing setup as intensive as it what it is for beverages, or how would it be say different in case this factor comes into play? It's a bit too early. Let us start with the first unit. <laughs> So let us understand this, and and right now it's a co-packing arrangement only. So I think we'll stick to that for the time being and understand it before we can talk a little anything more. 
sure if you get it. My last question was on on the bet side. Uh, we've obviously, uh, you know, given the strong uh, run rate and performance, there will be significant cash generation that will accrue in the Q3 second quarter and for the year. Uh, other than debt repayment, uh, uh, or is it fair to assume that most of this will be used for the debt repayment, or uh, how sh- how should we look at? I think. part of it will be definitely used for debt reduction and some of it will be a use for capex enhancement because with the run rate of growth which is happening we would have to spend some more money on capex and this is helpful i wish you all the best thank you so much thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of devanshu bansal from mk global financial services please go ahead Yes, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a really strong uh, set of numbers. Uh, so to uh, build on the uh, question asked earlier on international deals, uh, so uh, as I view, the base quarter was also quite strong here, and on that base we have grown about 30% in volumes. Uh, so just wanted to understand uh, the drivers of this strong growth, uh, as well as any outlook uh, here uh, that you can give us uh, for the coming years would be helpful. No, I think one was uh, if you look at uh, Morocco. By the time we were able to put up our line, it it had passed the season because of uh, COVID. Uh, we couldn't get the people, so that performance is that uh, enhancement of the uh, the additional line has started giving us results. And uh, Zimbabwe is also the addition. What we did last year has started giving us results. So. and even uh, if you look at uh, sri lanka which has done very well so if you look at uh, morocco has grown at 50% for us so that has given a big spike and zimbabwe has done well for us actually all the countries have done well for us so it's very difficult so i think uh, it's not a, just a spike i think the overall business is improved then i think we look at some good results coming going forward also so uh, going ahead any outlook you can uh, provide as in if morocco uh, uh, now uh, cy22 would be a good base and upon that uh, what would uh, uh, what is your outlook on growth in these geographies well morocco has become a reasonable size business for us and uh, because of the growth in volume which has become a profitable and a and good business for us which we were struggling for quite some time before so that's the guidance i can give you sure sir uh, sir i also wanted to understand uh, since lemon is a very uh, large market uh, so how is the traction for uh, uh, our other new launch mountain dew ice uh, and are there any marketing plans uh, that we intend to launch uh, going ahead No, I think we have got our hands full this year with the, uh, you know, the, with the Sting and Mountain Dew ice. We are already launched last year, so it's doing extremely well for us. And with value-added dairy as well as Tropicana, we have got enough, and even Gatorade is doing extremely well this year for us. So I think we have enough products apart from our core business, which is growing at a very healthy volume, which you are already seeing. Sir, I was specifically asking for Mountain Dew Ice, uh, not a new product. No, Mountain Dew Ice is doing well for us, but uh, you know, we are uh, whatever limited capacity we have, we are producing it, and it is selling to the capacity actually. Sure, sir. Uh, lastly, sir, uh, uh, in terms of uh, PET stocking uh, that we did in December 21, uh, what would be the uh, crude price levels at which we stocked the uh, PET in December? that's very difficult for me to but we bought it at a reasonably decent price because we bought it mostly at the end of the year sure sir uh, that's helpful yeah that's it from my end i'm so taking it the price of course second was the you know dnc agency a logistics uh, rate or issue so at least this uh, decision to
Welcome to Access Bank Phone Banking. For information on Forex Card, you may reach us on 040-6717-4100. To report loss of debit card or credit card, dial 0 for prepaid card services. To report loss of debit card, dial 1. To report loss of credit card, please hold while we transfer your call to a phone banking officer. Good afternoon. Welcome to Access Bank. My name is Sabah. How may I assist you? Okay. Thank you for the confirmation. Okay, if you have a credit card, you can transfer your call to the credit card department directly. You can confirm it. Okay? Yes. I will transfer your call to the credit card. Thank you for contacting Access Bank. Have a good day. Thank you. Namaskar, I will ask you about your name. Who can you tell me about your name? हेलो जी 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 सर बोलिए 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 सर क्या जानकारी चाहिए जी सर ऐसे ऐसे प्रोडिशन में कॉल करने के लिए धन्यवाद आपकी बात मिस्टर ललित से हो रही है आओ मैं हेल्प यू यस सर ओके ओके सर Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. 76, sir. 76. 76, sir. Sir. Okay. Age. Sir, uh, sir, आपको जो आपने plan देखा है ना, वो मैं plan आपको अच्छे से explain कर देता हूँ, sir. ठीक है? उसमें क्या है सर वो प्लान का नाम है सिंगल लाइफ विद रिटर्न ऑफ परचेज प्राइस एट दी एज ऑफ सेवेंटी सिक्स ओके ये प्लान का नाम सर जी 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 सर ओके सर ओके सर ओके 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 जी सर ओके सर ओके ओके सर सर मैं आपको
हेलो कोड ब्लू इन एयर कोड ब्लू इन एयर कोड ब्लू इन एयर कोड ब्लू इन एयर हेलो क्या है नि, निमोचरा भैया बहुत बोल रहा है